Okay, we are ready to get into this. Um, just, I just want to start a little bit with Come Follow Me, but I want to get into the Lost Tribes. That's what this is going to be mostly about, this video. Um, Happy New Year to all. I hope you've... <sighs> You know, what's that What's that hymn that's so depressing? Uh, uh, ring in the bells or no, I can't remember it. it. It's about the only one we sing for New Year's that's in our hymn book. You know, bury the, the last year and get rid of it. And I don't know, it's just, it's just a, it's just kind of a weird song for me. I don't know. It's probably cool. I haven't really studied the words, but um uh, you know, bury the past and, and look forward to the future. I think there's a lot of wisdom in that, though, because uh, we have a tendency, like what, what drives our news cycle? Our news cycle are usually the horrific things, terrible things that have happened. And and that's kind of what our memory does for for the year, the past year. We go, oh, we did this and had this happen to us. And and had this struggle. Um, and then we we look forward with anticipation of, of better times. We do that. As, as the older we get, we do it for our children and then our grandchildren. We think, oh, I hope they have it better than we had it, right? And, and and sometimes that's a blessing and sometimes that's a curse. But in any event, uh, it's a new year. It's a new year, and we're looking forward to all the cool things that the Lord will reveal to us uh, as we are obedient to Him, and uh, great and wonderful things are going to happen. Yeah. Okay, now, just just the, the interesting thing, <clears throat> I haven't read any of the lessons. In fact, I don't even know if we're supposed to get new lessons for this, or is it a repeat of the old? I, I know some of the vast that, and I, I, to be honest, I haven't really looked at it. I, I usually just go through the, the reading for that week and then create my own lesson in my mind. And then if I happen to substitute primary, that's, that's what I teach. Uh, Sue teaches the nine and 10 year olds, but I substitute a lot with her and, and help. And I, I totally enjoy it because it's every week. It's every week that, that you're teaching in primary, come follow me. Whereas the adults, it's every other week. And then it, to me, this gets convoluted, but you know what? Not my pig, not my farm, but I just read it, study it, but I don't really use what, you know, the manual would be. So good question out there for all of us to find out if if we have some new material or, or what, okay? Um, but I suspect, and this is just me wondering because I haven't looked into it at all, but I suspect as we go through Matthew 1, it's the, it's the lineage of, of Christ, uh, his mortal lineage. And... The emphasis is on the royal lineage through David, which is awesome, and it should be. But we also have to remember that Christ goes below us all in all things. It's just like how he was baptized at the lowest point on earth, where the, where the Jordan River empties into the Dead Sea. You know, what is it, 13, 1400 feet below sea level? Are you kidding me? And, and it's so symbolic. It's, it's also the same place where the children of Israel crossed with Joshua leading them, the lowest point to then begin to enter the promised land, which would become the highest point of, 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 of you know, building the temple, having the covenant and doing all those things. And then that will eventually return uh, through the all of the restoration, and, and it becomes the highest point. So you descend to the lowest point to enter the highest point. And I think this is an example of Christ's life because, and I'm going by memory here, but if we, if we think of also intermingled in this royal lineage, lineage of Christ, you have 
um, you, you have Ruth, the union of Ruth and Boaz. This is so fascinating to me because Ruth is a Moabite. Moabites who were over in the land of Jordan, modern day Jordan now. And that's where uh, Naomi left uh, Bethlehem because of the drought, goes to the land of Moab and her sons marry Moabite women, Ruth being one, the husbands die. Ruth or uh, Naomi go, is going to go back to Bethlehem. The drought's over, and and Ruth says, "I'm I'm going to go with you. you you're gonna I'm going to be part of your people." And she tries to discourage and say, "You know what, Moabites and and is Israelites or or Jews, you're not a good mixture." And she goes, you know what? I'm going to do it. Well, Boaz, so, so she does. And then Boaz is in Bethlehem and he has a, a, a field. And it, it's actually cool from, from the palace of King Herod, one of his palaces that's just outside of Bethlehem. It, it overlooks the valley of where Boaz would have um, had, his, had his farm, if you will. And that's where Ruth was was working, and that's where he sees her. And you can see where this all took place. And it's also where David is is from, that area. Later on, he came. Um, so the son of Jesse, and all that is in that area. Well, here you have Ruth, a Moabite. Now, where did the Moabites come from? An incestuous relationship with Lot and one of his daughters. So this is kind of, to me, I love it because it it's an example of, we, we well, <laughs> we don't have to come from this pure pioneer stock. We don't have to have this royal lineage to be uh, uh, one of the, the, the people in the church, you know, that enjoys the blessings of the gospel. Uh, you see that a lot in Utah where, you know, it's, it's, we trace our pioneer lineage. And so we're, we have special rights, you know, that I mean, people don't actually come out and say it, but, but there's this inference, you know, that, that, you know, we are from this family and, you know, did this and this and this. Well, Christ his lineage has these interesting spots. So, so Ruth is a is a Moabite descendant f from that relationship. Isn't that interesting? And then Boaz is a descendant of Rahab, the harlot from um, uh, Jericho, that says, "You know, your God is going to be my God. I'm going. I'm joining you." And she did. She, here she was a Canaanite. In, in probably one of the, if not the oldest continuous running city in, in the world, ancient, ancient Jericho. And and she is, is, you know, and I've heard this explained away so many times. Well, she was an innkeeper. She wasn't really a harlot or, you know, it's like, it's okay. It's okay. She repented and she really became part of the children of Israel. And, and moved with them, and her family was protected. This last trip, we, we were at Jericho, and you could see the double walls of the city as it's been ex excavated of that time period. It's fascinating. And, and uh, Rahab lived in between the two walls. And there is a section there that we saw. I'm, I'm getting goosebumps right now. There's a section that we saw that was the most preserved because you can actually see burn marks that, 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 that's in the, in the soil, in the dirt, in the rocks. Um, you can see the two walls. Um, you can see how they collapsed inward like this so, so the armies could, you know, just, just walk right into the city. And the walls came tumbling down. And, but there's one section that was very well preserved. And if you remember right, the, 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 the story is, is that Rahab, because of, of her being kind to the spies of, of Joshua coming in and 
finding out what was going on. And, and she, she helped them escape. She wanted to become part of them. They, um, this, this harlot, her and her family were protected. So this, this could be this, the exact location where, where Rahab and her family was, was this, is this protected part that, that is basically intact of the, of the ancient, ancient city of Jericho. It's a possibility, right? It's a possibility. Uh, uh, Archaeology is not an exact science. In fact, I don't think anything is an exact science. It just changes and changes and changes. So, but anyway, so you have a Canaanite harlot that is the great, great, I don't know, grandmother. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know the, the, how far back, but definite grandmother, direct line to Boaz. And then, and then Ruth, a direct line from a Moabites to, you know, the relationship with Lot and his daughter. So it's, it's crazy, right? It's pretty cool because it, it shows the extremes and Christ covers them all. He, his lineage, his ministry, everything he did, he went above everybody and below everybody, all encompassing Jesus. It's, it's so cool. So, so let's not forget that lineage too, as we're as we're studying uh, that. Okay, I spent too much time on that. Now, the ten tribes, the ten tribes. Okay, some of you have heard the the, the expression "original thought." I have a lot of original thoughts, and it's not because I I am the originator of them. It's I have never heard them until I study it or something. I go, wow. And then later I find out, yeah, a lot of people knew about it way before you. And that's happened every time. So, but, but it's original to me. I like, I didn't learn it from a manual. I didn't um, hear it from somebody else. So I've studied it and then boom, it pops out to me. So I was, <sighs> I just had this, 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 the scriptures in Malachi as we finished the Old Testament and the different versions of the last verses, right? And the one, the one uh, that was given by Moroni, the angel Moroni to Joseph Smith up in the law, upper room of the log house there in, in Palmyra. And, and we've been there, you've been, a lot of you have been there and, and you can kind of get a feel of, of the recreation of that building and you can, you know, you can see where the temple is up there. You can see the sacred grove and you can just get a feel for the angel Moroni appearing to Joseph through that night. Um, was he 17, I think? I can't remember now. Anyway, that, that, that scripture quoted in Malachi. So, so the version in the, uh, that Christ quotes in 3rd Nephi is, is basically the same as it is in Malachi. But the one in the Book of Mormon, or excuse me, in the Doctrine and Covenants is different, as, as well as in the Joseph Smith history. But um, so, so I was studying that, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Now, what led me to, to the Ten Tribes is, is reading the account, and, and we'll, we'll get back to that Malachi in just a second. But reading the account in section 110 of, the, of the, the heavenly resurrected beings that came and restored priesthood keys. And, and we have the keys of the gathering. We have the Elias. So, so that was Moses. And, and we'll, we'll talk, really get into that one. We have Elias, the dispensation of the gospel of Abraham. And then we have Elijah. And if you think of the threefold mission of the church, which then was expanded under President Monson to, to four things, but, but we don't really pay attention to President Monson because he, he's passed away. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we only are concerned with the living prophet, not nobody that's, that's, that's in the past. No. Before President Monson added taking care of those that, that have needs, major needs, um, and it's worded a little differently than it was originally. It's a little softer. Um, 
for whatever reason. But the, the first that the, the was for many, many years, the, the threefold was um, uh, um, gathering or missionary work, the keys for that, um, or, or uh, sharing the gospel. Gosh, what, what, what was it called? Redeeming the dead, perfecting the saints, and proclaiming the gospel. I, I think it, it's that. So redeeming the dead. So those were all attached to the keys restored. You see how that works? So redeeming the dead, Elijah, perfecting the saints, the, the, the gospel, the, um, the dispensation of the gospel of Abraham restored by Elias. And we can get into that a little bit, who Elias was or title, you know, all that. And then the keys of the gathering or proclaiming the gospel uh, was, was by Moses. So I started reading this and, uh, in conjunction with Malachi. And listen to this. So, so this is section 110. This obviously happened in the Kirtland Temple, which I've maintained is one of the promises of, of what the new Jerusalem will entail. So, so this is a stage or a, a new Jerusalem, maybe not the new Jerusalem, but a new Jerusalem in the sense that these heavenly keys, these messengers came and restored these, these uh, priesthood keys. Verse 11, section 110. And after this, after this vision closed, the heavens were opened, again opened unto us, and Moses appeared before us. How cool is that? I wonder if he had, you know, the big the big beard and the flowing hair, you know, I, I, like how old would he have been as a resurrected being? You know, we're, we're told that it's, it's pretty much the prime of your life. So, but can you even imagine a young Moses? You know, we, we've watched the 10 commandments so many times in Charlton Heston. And we always think of it at the end, you know, Mount Sinai and the hair turned gray and white and, the beard, and I don't know. It'd be interesting to, I, I wish they would have given a description of him. Moses appeared before us and committed unto us the keys of the gathering of Israel. And most of us just stopped there. From the four parts of the earth, comma, and the leading of the 10 tribes from the land of the north. Those keys have been restored through the prophet Joseph Smith. Now, all the other keys that were restored are, have been in use, except for that one? Come on, folks. The, the same person at the same time restored the same keys. They have to be connected. They have to be connected, and they... In my opinion, this is all just my opinion, but they have to be um, implemented at the time of restoration. Why would why would those keys be restored if the return of the lost tribes isn't happening or, and wasn't happening since the time of Joseph Smith? It, 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 you're saying that they they're restored through the prophet Joseph Smith, but aren't going to happen until Christ comes or some point right before he comes where all the other keys were enacted immediately. They were given for a reason. These keys of the return of the leading of the 10 tribes from the land of the North, why would they be restored at Kirtland Temple if they weren't gonna be immediately utilized? All the other keys were. So that this was this was my original thought, original to me. I'm sure Bruce R. McConkie's probably talked about it. I haven't looked it up. I'm uh, Joseph Fielding Smith may have talked about it. Those are the two that that really dared to have an opinion uh, and put it out there. Uh, everything else has been pretty silent recently uh, in recent years on the on the ten tribes. But think of that. I think it's. I think it's an indication that these things are simultaneously going on. Now, here's, here's when, we, when we go to the article of faith uh, that we believe in uh, the gathering 
of Israel and the return of the lost 10 tribes or 10 lost tribes. Um, and, and people go, see, two separate events, da, 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 da. Well, you can't return to the covenant unless you are gathered, unless you're gathered. Now, some people will say, well, isn't that Elijah who restored that? And then that's where I go into the angel Moroni appearing to the prophet Joseph Smith and, and changing those verses just slightly um, to help us, I think, understand this. Because in verse 15 of section 10, well, I'll, I'll read verse 14. Behold, the time is fully come, which is spoken by the mouth of Malachi, testifying that he, Elijah, should be sent before the great and dreadful day of the Lord to come to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest the whole earth be smitten with the curse. There it is. It's quoted again. It's part, one of the most quoted. It's in all of our standard works. Okay, now, if we go to section two, let's let's listen to this, this different, just slightly different, and see why the, uh, the leading of the 10 tribes would be under the keys of Moses, where um, Elijah is, is more about what we're doing and the keys of what we're doing, not what the 10 tribes are doing. And I'll make my point here. Hopefully it'll, it'll make it clear. Okay. Probably the shortest section in the Doctrine and Covenants or one of the, it's three verses. I'm just going to read verse two. And he shall plant in the hearts of the children the promises made to the father. The fathers being Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the hearts of the children turn to their fathers, which would be their ancestors. See? So the promises made to the father, he will, he will plant in the hearts of the children. I would say that's us living in the latter days. The promises made to the father. So, so we're going to be, um, we're going to have planted in our hearts, the promises made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the hearts. And then our, our hearts will turn to our ancestors. It's all about what we're doing. This is, this is family history right? This is family history. So this is what Elijah restored, this, this, this desire, this planting in our hearts to, to research our past, research our ancestors, and then gather them the information. And then the return, it's not mentioned, the, the return of them is not mentioned here. Can, can you see what I'm saying? Then the, the lost tribes coming is under the keys of Moses. But they have to be gathered first or they, our hearts have to be turned and we have, to, we have to, to do all that family history. That's under the keys of Elijah. But for them to, to return to the covenant after they've been gathered is under the keys of Moses. This is, so the return of the 10 tribes is the ordinance work being done. And you can't do ordinance work unless the names are gathered, unless they're, they're brought together. So, so this is, to me, this was enlightening because number one, the keys were restored by Moses for the return of the 10 tribes. Now, I've said this before, okay? So most of most of us, most of us are in the church. Um, and this isn't to diminish any of the other tribes, but most of us are from the tribe of Ephraim or Manasseh, uh, sons of, of, of Joseph. And Ephraim got the birthright. You know, we know that story. And, and really responsible for the, these, this latter-day gathering and, and work 
to be performed. Well, Ephraim was one of those lost tribes. Ephraim was part of that. In fact, Ephraim, remember we read the, the drunkards of Ephraim? We, we were really, by we, I, I consider myself, you got to take the good with the bad, and, and I consider myself a direct lineage, the blood or the loins of Joseph through Ephraim, or, or, or uh, of Ephraim through Joseph, that that the the when Ephraim before the Assyrians attacked, Ephraim was really in cahoots with the Assyrians, and they had really caused much of the rebellion and the worshiping of false gods and all the all the things that went along with it, and and that's in our that's in our lineage too. It's almost like okay, because you were so bad, you're going to have the responsibility of gathering everybody now. It's payback. <laughs> so so we're paying for the sins of our ancestors. I, I'm just kind of being lighthearted here. But, but we are part of the, the lost tribes. And so Joseph, a pure Ephraimite, or Ephraimite, as, as we call it, um, We, we can see how these, these things can happen. Now, let's go to a couple of scriptures in, in that, that bring up issues. One's in 2 Nephi, which I love, and, and we can talk about the 10 tribes. I probably won't bring up all of the, of the 10 tribes, um, lost tribes, uh, scriptures, but, but just some. Okay, so this is 2 Nephi 29. For behold, I shall speak unto the Jews, and they shall write it, We've been studying Old Testament and New Testament. It's really the Bible because all the authors of the New Testament, I think, are Jewish. Well, we know that we know that um, Paul was a Benjamite, but but really the tribe of Benjamin and Judah were both in the Southern Kingdom, and 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 even. Even Lehi can considered himself a Jew because he was from Jerusalem, even though we know that he was from the tribe of Manasseh. So it, 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 it's kind of where you're from as well. So we always have to remember that. But, but okay. For behold, I shall speak unto to the Jews and they shall write it, the Bible. And I shall also speak unto the Nephites and they shall write it, the Book of Mormon. <laughs> okay. Um, and I shall also speak unto other tribes of the house of Israel, which I have led away, and they shall write it. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. And I shall also speak unto all nations of the earth, and they shall write it. And it shall come to pass, and here's, here's so, and so, this is so interesting. And it shall come to pass that the Jews shall have the records of the Nephites. Do Jewish people have access to the Book of Mormon? Absolutely. They might not want, want it, but they have it. If they want it, it's there. Okay? And the Nephites, okay, they have the Nephites, and the Nephites shall have the words of the Jews. So the Nephites, now this is interesting because who are the Nephites? Is it anybody who has the words? of that, that are contained in the Book of Mormon? Would they be considered Nephites in a way because they have the words of, of the prophets, the Nephite prophets? Or is it just specifically saying that the Nephites on the other side of the veil will have the words? You see how, how this can be interpreted either way? Okay, and the Nephites shall have the words of the Jews, and the Nephites and the Jews shall have the words of the lost tribes of Israel, and the lost tribes shall have the words of the Nephites. So we have, we've, I think it's pretty easy to identify the Bible, pretty easy to identify the Book of Mormon. Well, where does the Doctrine and Covenants fit in there? Who is the prophet, the main prophet of the, the the Doctrine and Covenants that the, the Lord revealed to. Joseph Smith. 
What tribe was Joseph Smith from? Ephraim. What what tribe or what uh, where was Ephraim? They were in the northern kingdom. Were they part of the lost tribes that got scattered? Yes. Yes. To the north. To the north. All the European nations, all that area where, where most of the early saints came from, the conversion of thousands uh, were from that region. Okay? So, so now we have the words of the Nephites, the words of the Jews, and some of the lost tribes. Now, I personally think that there, are, that Christ did visit many other civilizations. Do you realize if we didn't have the Book of Mormon, we'd have no idea that Christ ever even came here. We have these, you know, Quetzalcoatl and you know the 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 the, the um, uh, teachings and the. <clears throat> Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the legends of a, a bearded white God, you know, coming down. We, we have those kind of things. Well, you know what? They're in a lot of other ancient civilizations, uh, that kind of story. Also, the legends of flood, of, of an of a earthly flood, flooding the, you know, everything. So, we have, if we didn't have the Book of Mormon that came through a few very devoted and dedicated uh, individuals and by divine intervention and, and by the plan of our Heavenly Father for us to have that record, to be a witness on, on the Western Hemisphere of Christ's visit, we would never know. And all we have is the Bible. But think of think of the miracle of having the Bible and that witness. It's incredible the the divine intervention for us to have these witnesses. Now, we also have the Dead Sea Scrolls. That they were probably of the tribe of Levi, most of them, I would think. Uh, the tribe of Levi wasn't necessarily part of the Northern Kingdom, although there were Levites in the Northern Kingdom. The, the tribe of Levi never was given, given a, a, a section of land, if you will, but because of their responsibilities of the priesthood, they were distributed through throughout all of Israel. But, but the Dead Sea Scrolls, you also have writings in, um, in um, Nag Hammadi in Northern Egypt that are fascinating, interesting. So we have these different writings. Now, I suspect we'll, we will, there will be more revealed. But already we have prophets. prophets. Brigham Young was an Ephraimite. It hit, some of his writings are in the Doctrine and Covenants or hit the revelations given to him. I, I suspect Joseph F. Smith, uh, who, who's in the Doctrine and Covenants, was probably an Ephraimite. I don't know that for sure, but he probably was. So, so we have a record. Now, I know what we're thinking in our mind, that, that these people are somehow living independent and they have their own prophets among them and someday they're, they're all going to return and, and you, you know, be, be a people. Now, there definitely will be large groups of people from the Northern Kingdom that will be will come back to Jerusalem, to their land, and and this or, or and Israel. Now, you think of, you you think of, right now, right now. They're they're considered Jews, but we but really, do you really know what their lineage is? But right now, in in Ukraine, you have Jews fleeing and coming to Israel. It's fascinating to me because I'm looking at my map here. If you if you find Jerusalem and go straight north, guess what you run into? Ukraine. Now, we consider them Jews. 
Nephi considered himself a Jew. Lehi considered himself a Jew, even though they were from a tribe of the northern kingdom. Well, we actually don't know Nephi, but but you could you could suspect that he was probably from Manasseh, as his father was. But, but we don't know that. That's not always the case. But 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 I think it's a pretty safe assumption. Northern kingdom, they they migrated to Jerusalem for protection, perhaps perhaps because uh, the the Assyrian attack of the northern kingdom was about 100 years before Lehi came around, right? And so his family could have left or, you know, there's a mixture. It's not that far of distance. We're talking 70 miles, you know, 50 miles, 40 miles, 30 miles. The, the northern kingdom is just very, very, barely north of Jerusalem, really. And that's where the 10 tribes, you know, were, were attacked. But the Assyrians could not take the southern kingdom. And then later Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar did and scattered that, the, the southern kingdom. Um, and we, we know that history and, and we know how that works. But, but let's just be realistic. The, the, the northern kingdom was scattered because of their disobedience. Why are we thinking that they're this righteous people that have all these scriptures and they, they've lived independent? No, they assimilated into all the, the worldly gods and crazy things and they, they got lost to the covenant. They, they forgot who they were. And that's what is happening now is, is the remembering. But most of it, most of it, they're all dead. <laughs> So most of it is done through temple work or through family history and then, and then their work being done and they return to the covenant. The keys, the keys, the keys are, that's how you track this, in my opinion, is who restored the keys, what were the keys for, and were they implemented? And I say, yes, yes, yes. To all of it, 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 it it's, it's, it's spelled out in section 110 of the Doctrine and Covenants. These, the, the keys of the return and leading the 10 tribes back isn't dormant. It was, it was implemented the minute they were given to the prophet Joseph and everything, the ball started rolling with all those keys. Some keys that haven't been restored, keys of resurrection, keys of creation, haven't been restored yet. Okay, but those keys have. So I, I think I think I think that's a good thing. Let let's let's go to a couple of other scriptures. Let's go to Third Nephi, and and hear the words of Christ, and and we can um, see if we can get even some more understanding because he talked a lot about the the lost tribes. So let's go to Third Nephi seventeen. 17, 4. Therefore, go ye uh, uh, unto your homes and ponder upon the things which I have said and ask of the Father in my name that ye may understand and prepare your minds for the morrow and I come unto you again. And then verse 4. You know what? This is really good though. Let, let me just, uh, I've got a, a couple minutes here. That verse three, so I'm in chapter 17 of 3rd Nephi, and the Lord is giving this. Look at the, this is so good. This would be really good for us to prepare for uh, going to the temple, prepare for sacrament meeting, prepare for, for um, conference. Okay, therefore go ye unto your homes and ponder upon the things which I have said. Hmm. Okay. And ask of the Father in my name that ye may understand. Okay. So ponder or, or go, go to your homes. I think that's number one. Home centered. <laughs> go to your homes. Ponder. The, the words of Christ, 
and then ask the Father in his name that you may understand. And then four, prepare your minds for the next day, the, the next teaching. And I come unto you again. Isn't that cool? Uh, a, a really good um, a pattern to follow as we continue. You know, we're so like, well, you do this, this, this. But it's, it's a continual thing. It's a continual thing. So we should always be in our homes, pondering upon the things which have been said. This is to prepare us for the next day, right? Ask the Father in my name that you may understand, and then prepare your minds for the morrow. And I come unto you again. This can happen every day if, if, we, if we want it to. Okay, got, got off a little bit. Okay, now verse four. But now I go unto the Father and also to show myself unto the lost tribes of Israel. For they are not lost unto the Father, for he knoweth whither he hath taken them. So he goes and visits other people of the lost tribes that were scattered all over the place. Now we know that he led people. Uh, we, we have the record of the Jaredites and we have the record of the Mulekites. There has to be others that we don't have a record of. And we really don't have a record of the Mulekites other than as they assimilated. Well, they, they were the originator of Zarahemla. So as the Nephites came in and kind of took over, <laughs> you're going to learn our language. We'll teach it because you guys kind of blew it. And, and of course, you know, the, a son of Zedekiah, if he was anything like his dad, probably not that great of a guy. So, you know, he, he was just getting out by the skin of his teeth. But anyway, um, there, there, no doubt that Christ would have visited, but we don't, we don't know much about that because probably those people went into apostasy, apostasy just like the Nephites and the Lamanites went into apostasy. And, and were it not for some miraculous things that were for a divine purpose, we have the Book of Mormon. It's a second witness or another witness of Christ. And that's, that's what we have to go on. But my guess is, is there were other people that Christ visited and it had an effect on them. We have, we have these, these legends and these beliefs in these old ancient civilizations of all kinds of things that are similar. They all have the same origin. They all have the same origin. And then they got corrupted and then just boom. And in a short period of time, things are lost. It's, it's just like the covenant when Christ came within, within was it 200 years? The, actually, you could even go back further to King Benjamin's sermon and the people that made the covenant, the young people, you know, they, they kind of blew it. Christ comes, 200 years, it's awesome. People remembered, they talked about it. They had the spirit within them. And then, you know, within a couple of generations, three generations, um, depending on how long people were living, um, unbelief crept in. And then once it creeps in, it's, it's like a, a fast growing cancer. And we would have never have known. We like we, we have these little hints, you know, like I said, you know, of, of a God coming down. You know, I, I've seen the hieroglyphs in, in the different places I've traveled in. Uh, uh, Sue and I have gone in Central America and Belize and Guatemala and Mexico, um, Honduras, and, and you see the ruins, you see it, and you, you could you can see how you know, there would be a hint of it, but it's nothing like having the Book of Mormon, right? It's, it's, just, it's just awesome. So I, I believe in that. Now let's go to one more, uh, 3rd Nephi 21. Uh, and, and also se section 133, I won't go there, but definitely got to read section 133. Um, and, and see if there isn't a... A reason or a how how it fits in with those keys restored to the prophet Joseph by Moses for leading the people the, of the lost tribes. Okay, now um, Third Nephi twenty one. 
and uh, we'll 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 go here. Now th this will take just a little bit of time here, um, but I I I think we need to really dissect a few verses here. I'll start in verse uh, twenty two. Um, but if they will repent and hearken unto my words, uh, and harden not their hearts, I will establish my church among them. It's talking about the Gentiles. Uh, among them, and they shall come in unto the covenant and be numbered among this, the remnant of Jacob, unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance. Okay, so a remnant of Jacob is really, in my opinion, uh, I'm Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel or Jacob. A remnant of Jacob would be anybody who has, um, is of the 12 tribes. A remnant of Jacob. Just take it literally like that. That's that's what I do. So this land is, and, and I'm, I'm going here because I'm living it within the land. I don't like borders as far as um, when we're talking about the promised land because it doesn't make sense because there were no borders at the time of Lehi. There, there, I shouldn't say that. There were borders, but different than what we, we have in our mind today. So we're talking about the Americas in a general term. And that's why the New Jerusalem will be established on the American continent. Okay. But, okay, let's, so, so this land will be for that remnant to establish the church and, and, and then receive the covenant because of the restoration. Okay. Verse 23. So I'm in 3 Nephi 21, verse 23. And they shall assist my people, the remnant of Jacob, and also as many of the house of Israel as shall come, that they may build a city which shall be called the New Jerusalem. Now, are you saying that didn't happen yet? None of that has happened? None of that has happened. We're still waiting for uh, the remnant of Jacob to be given this land for an inheritance, and they shall assist my people, the remnant of Jacob, and also as many of the house of Israel as come, and that they may build a city which come. So none of that's happened yet? Uh, okay. And then it goes, verse 24, and then the next thing to happen, and they shall assist my people that they may be gathered in who are scattered upon all the face of the land into the new Jerusalem. It says into the new Jerusalem. It hasn't happened yet? Really? All those keys restored? Nothing's happened yet? Still waiting. Still waiting. Baloney. This is all happening and has happened since the restoration. Verse 25. And then, the next thing to happen, and then shall the power of heaven come down among them, and I will be in their midst. Now, the temple, the power, look at, look at the, the word power. Look at the word power. There's a footnote there, 25A. 25A, uh, and if you go to um, 3rd Nephi 20, just the... Uh, Third Nephi uh, twenty twenty two. So you just turn back. Third Nephi twenty twenty two, and it says, "And behold, this people will I establish in this land unto the fulfilling of the covenant which I made with your father Jacob, and it shall be a new Jerusalem, and the powers of heaven shall be in the midst of this people. Yea, even I will be in the midst of you." Um, Kirtland Temple, does that ring a bell? The, 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 the keys restored, we already have the priesthood restored through John the Baptist, the preparatory preparing the way of the Lord priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood, and then, and then we have Peter, James, and John, ancient apostles, all from Israel, 
restoring those. And then we have all the keys being restored by people from ancient Israel, you know, it's tying, tying us together. The presence of the Lord is there, is there, is there. The presence of the Lord. What do we call the temple? The house of the Lord. It's his home. It's his presence. This is the new Jerusalem. And then shall they assist. Okay, so I'm back. Okay, I'm back to 3 Nephi uh, 21. Um. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in uh, verse 24. And then they shall assist my people that they may be gathered in who are scattered upon all the face of the land. This gathering has been happening, guys, in unto the new Jerusalem. Where are they gonna be gathered to? Their names are gonna be gathered to, to the temple. There, there is missionary work as well through living people. But the keys are the same. Whether you're dead or alive, the ordinance is the same. The ordinance is the same. The ordinance is the same. And then shall they assist my people, and they shall be gathered in and scattered upon all the faces in the land of New Jerusalem. And then shall the power of heaven come down among them, and I also will be in their midst. In the temple, guys. The, verse 26. And then the next thing to happen. And then shall the work of the Father commence at that day, even when the gospel shall be preached among the remnant of this people. Okay, so we've already had the new Jerusalem established, but this hasn't gone on yet. And then shall the work of the Lord commence at that day, even when the gospel shall be preached among the remnant of this people. Verily I say unto you, at that day shall the work of the Father commence among all the dispersed of my people. Yea, even the tribes which have been lost which the Father hath led away out of Jerusalem. Are we saying this? none of this has happened yet? Because we're still waiting for the new Jerusalem in Jackson County? Guys, the restoration, the keys restored, it was for a reason. And, and you cannot separate those keys that were given by Moses For, for for the same purpose. It's it's incredible. I say section 110 nails this, nails this. Um, and the work shall commence among all the dispersed of my people with the Father to prepare the way whereby they may come unto me that they may call on the Father in my name. And then the last and then Verse 28, yea, and then shall the work commence with the Father among all nations in preparing the way whereby his people may be gathered home to the land of their inheritance. And they shall go out from all nations and they shall not go out in haste nor go, go by flight. For I will go before them, saith the Father, and I will be their rearward. So, For me, this is so clear in my head. I know I've had a little difficult time explaining it, but you read those verses in section 110 of, of the Doctrine and Covenants and the restoration of keys and see if they, why would they not be utilized until this sometime in the future where the new Jerusalem will be built you know, then all this stuff can happen. So what, the last 200 years, we've just been this? Well, just waiting. Someday, someday we'll be a righteous enough people. Someday we'll separate ourselves from, from Babylon. But until then, oh, we just don't have anything, you know, there's, we don't have, Hundreds of houses of the Lord anywhere. We don't have this. We don't have this. We don't have all the other things over here. I mean, come on, guys. We're living it. We're living it. It's exciting. Uh, okay. 
I know I get a little exercise. I'm sorry. But I love you all. It's a great new year. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm already a little tired of the snow. <laughs> We've been getting pounded. But, um, but it's, it's good. We, we, we need the moisture. You know, I, lo I love hearing people pray about, we're thankful for the moisture. And I heard one guy say, you know, moisture is like what's under my armpits. We need, you know, water. <laughs> we, and it's, it's so funny they, how we start saying a word and then it just flies, you know, through the church. And, and then all the prayers are, th we're thankful for the moisture. You know, yeah, we are. We are thankful. Okay, God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.